Oysters have been part of Louisiana economy and history since the early 1800s. We liked farming. Uh, we just thought, you know, this this could be like a uh, like land farming. <laughs> we saw an opportunity about in 2013 to have a oyster lease here in Grand Isle. We're, we're always hoping for the best. It's going to be a rough evening for Louisiana, particularly in the, the southeastern uh, portion. I am confident that we are well prepared for this storm. Uh, I do hope that all the individual uh, families out there are, are prepared as well. That was a really bad day. Um, basically all the work that we put for seven years uh, that was uh, basically disappeared. The, the spot where we had the farm was just water. There was no uh, oyster gear or anything uh, left. Um, we had to uh, basically go around the bay and try to find our gear and uh, we found some of it, uh, very little, but you know we got some of it back and that's what we're, we're working with today. This is a late season storm that had a lot of momentum and acceleration with it, so it came through quickly. When Hurricane Zeta hit southeast Louisiana, Boris Guerrero and his father had been farming oysters in Grand Isle for seven years. You know, we don't need to feed them, you don't need to fertilize them, you don't need to use any chemicals to them. We just uh, let the bay, uh, you know, let the water flow through the, through the oyster and, and, and the oyster is gonna <laughs> start growing. So I think that's, uh, that's the beauty about uh, growing oysters. Originally cane farmers, they took their farming skills to the sea. Uh, we can pull from here and then we can put these if you want. And found the sustainability of oysters and their environmental benefits alluring. I think, the oysters itself, I think, is what attracted me. Uh, they're uh, very good animals for the environment. Uh, they, they, they filter the water. Uh, they give us good protein. While oyster farming has been around in South Louisiana for generations, the Guerreros practice a newer method known as off-bottom farming. Instead of the usual reefs attached to the seabed, the oysters are raised in floating cages, making them more mobile and giving farmers a chance to move them if conditions in the bay become unfavorable, a benefit in an industry that is notoriously fickle. We're always hoping for the best and uh, it does make us a little bit nervous every year because, uh, you know, we, we know usually a few things will happen, either fresh water or a hurricane. <laughs> or, those are the two main common things uh, when it comes around uh, oysters. Those challenges to growing oysters and a rapidly changing environment have taken a toll on the oyster population across the Gulf Coast over the past two decades. Since the early 2000s, we have seen a decline in the oyster population, especially in the public seed grounds. As oyster populations decrease, researchers say there's not just one singular issue to point to for that decline. We do have a lot of issues of sedimentation in Louisiana. Our coast is eroding, so that is part one. We have huge hurricanes, you know, storms every year, so that doesn't help either. Over the last few years, the Gulf has suffered a few major mortality events, with a major die-off of oysters in 2019, the result of a massive amounts of fresh water entering into the Gulf of Mexico. 2019 floods were extreme. It affected every basin in Louisiana. It caused mortality in every, from the side of Texas all the way to the border of Mississippi, including the state of Mississippi. But some areas had mortalities of 80 to 100 percent. The 2019 flood season was then followed by a record-shattering hurricane season. And scientists worry that all of these stressors may start to become a little too much. And every year we have been seeing, you know, a lot of those issues. And it's mortality after mortality that, you know, Mother Nature is not rebounding as fast as she used to. 
Researchers along the Gulf Coast believe that as issues pile up, oysters will eventually reach a tipping point. And while they may appear stable for a time, once that point is reached, populations sharply decline and eventually crash. And population crashes in the Gulf aren't unprecedented. While most of Louisiana's oysters are managed on private leased grounds, those oysters are still subject to the same environmental impacts as the ones on public grounds. They have seen very similar situations what we have, a lack of spat. Spat is the baby oysters. The lack of spat has made it harder for oyster reefs to rebound and has contributed to the population decline that Louisiana has been seeing. If we never had issues before, it would be baby larvae all over oyster. You know, they would rebound very fast. And in the last, since uh, the 2000s, it's just there's a lack of that spat. Let's do eight scoops. Both Boris and his father know the risks associated with making a living off of oysters. They've learned plenty of lessons along the way. The main lesson is we got to do a little bit things uh, differently. Uh, we have to uh, use maybe a couple different gears so we don't have one gear uh, uh, that, that will fail the same way all throughout. Not only different gear, but different locations uh, around the coast. I think it'll be the best because, you know, if, uh, if it's bad in one part, it'll have maybe a little bit better on the other side. <laughs> but to them, it's a way to help connect to the natural world. These are ready for market. Uh, I mean, they're, they're beautiful size. When you eat an oyster, you're trying a piece of the sea. And a lifestyle that gives them a chance to disconnect from the modern one. I think it's very peaceful, and uh, I think you, you sort of disconnect with the whole world when you're out there and you know doing what you got to do. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a whole different lifestyle that uh, we do enjoy doing it. Five months after we had that interview with Boris and his father, Hurricane Ida hit South Louisiana right there at Grand Isle. The equipment that they didn't lose during Zeta, they then lost during that storm. We reached back out to them before the airing of this piece. They said that they hope to start another harvest this spring. Down on the coast, I'm Daniel Phillips for KTC TV3.